Welcome to the Power of Percussion. My name is K. Michelle Lewis. I will be your host for today. And today's guest is Mr. John Fitzgerald. Hey, John, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm really happy to be with you right here, right now. Oh, awesome. Well, you're tuning in from Cali, California. Can you tell a little, little bit about yourself? Uh, oh, let's see. I was born. That's the beginning. Yay! Um, I'm glad you were born, yeah. John. Yeah, I was born here in Los Angeles, uh, 65 years ago, going on 66. And um, let's see, I guess I would say that, uh, you know, as a frolicking child as most are, I got, went through all my developmental phases, some of which were challenging, lots of learning uh, throughout these decades. And uh, part of that learning was drumming when I started, when I was 13. I really wanted to be somebody, you know, uh, and I also loved drumming. So I think I was driven by both by ego and inspiration. I uh, went on to get a degree in percussion from California Institute of the Arts. And I freelanced for about 25 years in Los Angeles, doing all kinds of things from uh, teaching private lessons to local orchestras, to jazz gigs, to some recording and movie stuff. And um, about 22 years ago, Remo Belly offered me a job at Remo Incorporated which is where I've worked Sweet. for, yes, the last 22 years. And I'm the manager of recreational music activities, which has everything to do with educating and advocating about the use of rhythm for well-being. And that includes celebration and play as part of well-being, as well as the, the aspects that may have more therapeutic outcomes or uh, spiritual connection and so forth. And as you know, um, Rhythm and drumming is just such a flexible and powerful tool. Uh, so right now, that's what I do. I facilitate for the company. I also facilitate lots of conversations and connections with organizations and work through our global distribu distributors to help support the movement in other countries, mm -hmm. along with our wonderful facilitator community. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I let's go back to that moment when Remo offered you this position. I know he has passed, mm -hmm. but whoa, that must have been an amazing time. <laughs> it was kind of a shock. I mean, uh, I got to I got I got an appointment with Remo. I didn't expect to meet with him, but somebody advised that he might be willing to, or Remo might be willing to donate some instruments or discount some instruments for a program that I was doing for the LA Opera Company in schools. Uh, so I got a meeting with him and I was very surprised. I presented my letter with the letterhead from the LA Opera Company and he said, sure, we can help you out. And then he said, would you like a tour? Uh, and he spent about an hour with me touring around the old facility. Uh, they since moved and sat down afterwards and I said, thank you so much for the tour. Huge surprise for me and thank you for your support. And he said, I might have a job for you, young man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, so that was a huge surprise. And, and over the uh, following couple, three months, we worked out details. And I began in 97 and followed 97. And that's how that began. Excellent. So how have you seen things change, you know, in the world of drumming, um, mm -hmm. with recreational drumming, your area? How, how, how have you seen things change from when you started to now? Well, I would cite uh, the occasional headline that used to, you know, be on a newspaper or a cast, a newscast or something. And it, when it involved the drum circle in, in Los Angeles in particular, it would usually say something like, uh, cop gets hit with brick at Venice Beach Drum Circle or something. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, what was noteworthy was that it was it was this sort of disruption that people saw. And the, the general attitude towards drum circles in the general population was that it was a bunch of hippies smoking dope and dancing naked around a fire. Um, now, every day, every week, many times a week, there are articles about rhythm and drumming being used to heal to support well-being for veteran populations, PTSD, uh, youth at risk, uh, curriculum integration, older adults uh, with memory care issues or just a need for socialization. Um, everything from you know prenatal pregnant mothers playing together to hospice care and beyond. Uh, mm -hmm. And these articles are happening all the time. So what I see is really 
hugely changed as a consequence of all the amazing work that facilitators and music therapists and teachers who use drumming have uh, been the groundwater that have seeded curiosity in the next levels up, the levels of, of intellectual curiosity through research. Now science is asking the questions why. So now we see research around drumming and rhythm and music making. And to close this thought, the NIH, the preeminent uh, health organization in the United States, the National Institutes of Health, has an initiative called Sound Health. They're looking at how music supports human health. That means that a lot has changed in 20 yeah, years. That's amazing. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I know it's mm. been healing for myself um, with MS, but I know a lot of other people across the country, across the world, who have, have experienced it directly. So yes. that is wonderful, wonderful news. Yes. Whoa. So <clears throat> there are so many things I know that you're passionate about with drumming, um, but why, why are you so passionate about drumming and providing this opportunity for your community? Well, I would say that I'm bring it to the most uh, internal and intimate aspects, which is that <clears throat> I think my great drive is to see people thrive, not just survive. Um, and, and that is a consequence of my own uh, journey of going from surviving to thriving and to joy. And I see rhythm as such an amazing vehicle for this because it does people bring, bring people into in the presence of themselves in their unique gifts. Uh, it, it, they are, those unique gifts are witnessed in community as each person con contributes their unique gift and is witnessed. That creates this space, this container that we can do so much with. And that's when we can celebrate a birthday party, we can mourn and grieve the passing of someone we love and everything in between. Um, for me, drum circles aren't about drums, drumming, or music. They're really about that. Yeah. That, that expression of essence in community is a place of creating a container for well-being. Yeah, and the connection among humans <clears throat> is uh, drum circles are a great place for that. I've seen people from all different backgrounds come together that don't know one another and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they've made new friends after mm -hmm. these drum circles it's a new mm -hmm. friend comes out of this and um that's healing in and of itself because oh yeah you know we um as a human race need each other mm. especially in the times now that we're in we need each other and this is a good, perfect place to to commune with others. Mm, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I, I'd say that we don't, it, 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 we do need each other because that's how we're built. Yes. As a species, if we've been around for a couple hundred thousands of years, that it is only in the very, 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 very last nanosecond of our existence in the last hundred or 200, even 300 years that communities have uh, dispersed through the facility of easy travel. So communities don't live and breathe and eat and argue and love in direct connection with each other. And our culture, I, I think particularly Western contemporary culture, is suffering from alienation. Absolutely. And desperate to try and fill that hole with things, with transactions, with uh, media that is not as rich in, uh, in nutrient as a direct conversation, a direct connection, a direct opportunity to play and express together. So uh, I think that we're, we're desperate for that, that kind of connection. And, and rhythm is, uh, when you sit down in a circle, as you know, and that pulse is going, it brings us into this moment only because that's where the pulse exists and our expression into that pulse and into that community uh, it, it levels everything. It, you know, there is, you're not sitting next to an older person. You're sitting next to somebody you're playing with, or you know, just those distinctions seem to go away. Right. So we can just be together. Yeah, just be. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful place. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so when you hear these words, power of percussion, what does it make you think of? And we've kind of talked about that a little bit, but it does have this power to it. Playing those drums brings out so many different things for different people. What does it make you think of? Well, lots of things come for me. I mean, as I said, for me, it's not about drums, drumming, or music. However, the percu- the instrument itself is so accessible. And, the, you know, we know there's all kinds of percussion. It can be a set of bells velcroed around the wrist of an elder who can't hold anything, and they're still participating, and they know it. Yeah. Uh, they're colorful. They're curious. They're playful. And, um, yeah, there's such diversity so it's an expression of our diversity. So percussion itself, the instrument itself, uh, is attractive, and it's a it's an invitation to play. And let's not you know blow past the uh, the the idea of play. For me, play is essential, and we don't have enough of it. It's a place where we release our um, our restrictions. Our frontal lobes go offline a little bit. Crazy and playful associations happen with people, with ideas, with expression. Uh, so percussion really invites that just by the nature of the instrument. Yeah. Um, I think something else that comes up for me is, well, uh, the power of percussion is evident. Every culture has percussion. Every culture has some way of making a rhythm. Yes, it does. And that's, so it's, 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 uh, it's expressed its power through evolution. And our choice, unconscious evolutionary choice, to create these things with which to speak to the world and to one another. Absolutely. And, you know, our, our bodies are percussion instruments. Mm. You know, yeah. we don't really need a can or a, a bottle or a djembe. Or a, we, we are the instrument. And that's, that's the other part that I think um, people forget, is that we are walking instruments. Mm-hmm. We can make music walking down the street, you know, and then join in. Um, do you feel like sometimes people think that they have to know something to be able to sit down in a drum circle? Oh, yes. There's always that. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, the, the, there's, those folks will jump in and give it a try, and those people say, oh, I don't have any rhythm, and I don't, you know, I... You know, I don't, uh, uh, no, that's okay. And they back away in fear because we have a culture that uh, is uh, predisposed to shaming and judgment around musical ability and other expression, uh, abilities of expression. And, um, you know, I often will see somebody at the outside of a circle tapping their foot, nodding and rocking or whatever, and arms crossed <laughs> and looking on and, and with a kind of a, sometimes a serious face. And I'll come up and say, hey, would you like the choice? Oh, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I don't have any rhythm. Well, <clears throat> I'll sometimes ask them, really, do you ever scratch yourself? <laughs> they're usually, they're re- initially offended by that. I don't know why scratching yourself somehow or another maybe brings up some images. I don't know. But uh, I said, do you ever scratch yourself? And I scratch myself back and forth and back and forth on my arm. Uh-huh. And they look at me and they go, yeah. I said, well, that's rhythm. It is your hand on a weirdo. <laughs> if He's I like, could, yeah. Well, here. <laughs> or, or potato shaker is actually the one that busts them up the most. But, oh, yeah, uh, yeah it's just a little humor, right? Play again. It, it lowers some of the resistance and, and the fear. And sometimes they'll stay at the outside and they'll shake a shaker or a tambourine or something. And, and sometimes they'll transition and find a seat, you know. So, yeah, yeah people are, people, we live in a culture that's, that's uh, very much about public persona and looking good and uh there's a fear there's going to be some doing something wrong and i think it's hilarious because they're usually looking at 30 40 or 100 people none of whom are are, are drummers anyway all flailing away in whatever manner they can and yet standing outside they think they may not be good enough yeah well this this instrument is the most accessible you mentioned that earlier it is the mm-hmm. absolute most accessible instrument um Aside from our voice, you know, our voices are accessible because they're they're on us. They're, you know, in us. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, tapping on a drum is so easy to do. And people of all ages and all abilities. Mm. Yeah, all you know, to say, 
to say something about the voice, it, it's absolutely true. This is with us all the time. I think that people are more threatened by using their voice because it is such a personal expression and it is how we have agency in the world and how people tend to view us, assess us, and or judge us. So the drum, which is, is what is sweet about it, is one step removed. Oh, it's just out there. It's That's a little true. colorful <laughs> toy. Or it's a, right? I don't have to, to expose. I'm not quite as exposed. Yeah, that, that is that, true. I've yeah. noticed that as well. So how, um, tell me this, how has um, drumming made your life or another person's life better? Like, how has it, let's start with how has it made your life better? Hmm. Well, I, I would say that um, hmm. I would start uh, with drumming when I started drumming as, as a path to a self-expression and self-challenge because it, it brought up a lot of my self-judgment. So it brought me in contact with that part of myself that did not accept myself, which means that I kept challenging that, which was a way of growing, you know, with fits and starts. Yeah. And then... Uh, as I uh, found my way into facilitation uh, and the experience of not just facilitating, which is its own gift, but being with people in a setting where we're just playing, and it might be somebody who'd never played before with some great players, with some intermediate players, and I'd probably fall in more or less that category in terms of hand drumming, where we would actually find a place of connection that was extraordinary and exquisite and um, uh, in stillness even though we were very active as drumming and we were like a flock and I've had this experience many times yeah. where I felt really and truly in touch with the muse so to speak mm -hmm. um, in a way that I rarely felt as a professional musician with all the demands for perfection and all my own personal demands obviously too but it was a place of flow that was extraordinary and that called me to a place of recognition that this is how life is possible to live. So that's one piece. Beautiful. But another is that uh, <laughs> I had this conversation about two and a half years ago, and as I get many calls at Rainbow for people who are interested in getting into facilitation and curious about how they might do that and try and be a resource, we try and be a resource for things. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, I've been doing some shamanistic drumming, but I'm working a bank. I really want to move into, you know, doing more stuff with rhythm, with groups. And, and you know, I have a personal practice, he said, and, you know, and I use a drum. And, but you know all about that. And <laughs> I said, well, actually, I don't. I had not ever really engaged in a personal practice. Um, and so that called me to explore that. So what has happened for me is I, I've gone through Mankind Project, which is a men's group, really wonderful organization, and they, uh, in the process, learned more about four directions as they express it. Okay. And I just decided that what I would do was uh, give thanks for blessings in all directions and as a practice. And I didn't know what I was doing. I took a buffalo drum, and I started playing, and I faced the direction, and I called forth my connection to the gifts from those directions and lots of people know about that I know there are different ways of expression of that so I won't go into any detail but that's only to say that that is a practice that has been very rich for me and uh, very personal and is always changing it's just whatever comes in that moment for each of those directions a recognition that I am lived by the blessings from those directions and the drum helps me uh, create that connection I have experienced that, and that's a beautiful connection. Mm. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Mm. Oh, so, how has um, how has drumming made you've you've done a lot of these drumming events and drum circles across the world with people? But how have like is there a story that you can tell me that you have noticed that's made that this drumming has made somebody else's life better? Mm. Well, there, I've had a, a bunch of experiences that were just, uh, uh, just saw a transformation, you know, or a recognition. And we'd spoken of one before we started the call, but I'll start with, uh, maybe I'll share two. <clears throat> one that was very early in my career at Remo, one of the first times I traveled to Asia, and we were in Japan, and I was with three facilitators who had recently been, actually hadn't been trained 
Remo was over there to help the, our distributor, Yamaha Music, uh, begin to engage in drum circles. So they brought these three people together and introduced them to us, and we did some drum circles. One in particular was for a bunch of Yamaha employees in, a, in an auditorium. It was sort of an auditorium setting. We passed out drums in all the seats. And first, uh, the boss came up, and he spoke in Japanese at length, and I cannot say what he said, but somewhere in there I heard drum circle and uh, facilitation. <laughs> And then uh, the, 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 uh, myself, my working partner, Chalo, and these two others actually uh, were waiting in the wings and uh, said, who wants to go first? And we looked at the audience and they were ramrod straight in their chairs. They were silent and they were in attention and we're going, this is going to be interesting. And uh, I volunteered to go first and everything. That's good. That's good. You go first. <laughs> right. So when the... When I came on the stage, which was where I had to facilitate from, not my usual, I said, could you translate for me? How many people here are drummers? Raise your hand. And dead silence and stillness. No. And then one guy raises his hand kind of meekly in the back there. And, okay, that's great. Okay, uh, take off your ringers and rings and jewelry. And we began. And we just began. And it went for an hour. And I facilitated and the other guys facilitated. And we brought it to a close, and at the very end, as we stopped the rhythm, I asked, translate for me, how many people out there are drummers? <laughs> <laughs> they all raised their hands. Oh, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. And it brings tears to me. I love yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, and the energy in the room oh, was, was significant, man. was they did not want to let go of the drums, and they were interacting with each other. They were no longer isolated people. They were a community. That is absolute yeah. beauty. And did yeah, you was, did you notice them move from attention to having fun and just oh, like yeah. engage? Oh they were at play. Absolutely. Good. Oh but wow. at the end of that they were they just couldn't wait to, to interact with the instruments and each other and they were just you know, a community. They created a community. That is super oh, I mm. love it. I love that story. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and let me share that other one. I'll see if it can be really brief. There's a convention with a lot of noise in the room and doing 20-minute drum circles. And there was a gentleman that approached the circle, tall, stately, gray hair, conservative-looking man, sat in the back row, took two, bon two bonos and put one under each hand and played them simultaneously, not alternating hands, for the entire 20 minutes of the circle. And we did a little call and response and this, that, and the other thing. And I noticed him, and I noticed his playing style. I thought, that's interesting. And I didn't notice him leave, but he was actually in a booth across the way. The next day, he came, stood next to me, and said, that drum circle was really something else. And I said, oh, I'm glad you liked it. And he said to me, you know, the preacher in our church, he's always watching the clock when he's preaching. This is what we need. He understood something about the essence of presence, for him a spiritual presence that existed in this simple experience that was not framed as a spiritual experience in any way. It was pure community, but in that community was pure connection, and he sensed that at the deepest level. So to me that was an extraordinary example of people receiving something um, of deep value for themselves. Yeah. And sometimes that's pure play, sometimes it's reflection, and sometimes it's a experience of the spirit. That is, I love that. Thank you so mm. much. Oh, that speaks volumes to the mm. power of this instrument and mm -hmm. when combined with other people, um, what it can do. Yeah. And, and everybody's experience is, is different, which is beautiful. Um, yeah. So these instruments touch people in different ways and change lives, absolutely. Like bring, um, yeah, bring people together and their lives better. Yeah, and I think really put them in touch with their own unique beauty. And, and while it is witnessed by others, they can uh, own it more fully as it's being received by others and as they receive others. And there's the container that we as facilitators could uh, create every day within which we can celebrate a birthday party, uh, we can grieve the passing of a loved one, 
um, and on and on and on. And you know the story about that. There's so many variations and so many ways to apply it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for sharing those stories. That's powerful. Mm. So how, um, gosh, you've got so many different experiences with with your job um, at Remo. Um, I know, like, they're developing lots of different drums probably every day. I have no idea. But are there any new... Um, I thought I saw something about a new something that they came out with just recently. What is mm-hmm. what is the newest instrument that is, that is out there from Remo? Well, yeah, I, 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 uh, the newest instrument is called the Harmony Bars. There's two, actually, two things that are coming out. Uh, harmony Bars are a set of three... Uh, chimes that have two notes on each and it's in C pentatonic yeah. and the, the end caps are, are color coded to the pitch boom whacker style so you can do color facilitation with them awesome. uh, and they're uh, resonant and consonant and very intuitive and the other is uh, green and the green and clean series these are instruments that are meant to be uh, easily cleaned for use in ICUs uh, intensive care units and other places where hygiene is a, at a high priority so they can be fully wiped down with um, disinfectants and stuff mm-hmm. and they, they're deliberately made that way those are the two main things um, I would like to say something about Remo Belli yeah. and his vision if I may Absolutely. <clears throat> the reason those instruments are produced the way they are is because of his vision and his vision was powerful and uh, I would say absolutely constant, never wavering. 25 years plus ago, he saw a drum circle. And he saw it through the eyes of a man who had studied jazz drumming, played professionally, and now had worked with the highest level professional academics, uh, percussionists, drum set players from every walk of life uh, for 25 or 30 years. And yet he saw a drum circle, heard about it, listened, and recognized 25 years ago that this would be a powerful tool and he saw the drum not as a musical instrument but as a tool wow. and uh, yeah I just uh, I'm moved by that I mean yeah. he's created this movement would still go there would always there would this would always have happened but I, I think what what Remo did was really shine a light uh, put some miracle grow on the garden uh, support so many organizations and so many trainers and facilitators in so many countries and do so uh, also through the design of the instruments. It's specifically meant for people to play, not mu- just musicians, but anybody. And really uh, considering all the uh, logistical challenges of schlepping a bunch of drums as well as the the maintenance challenges and all that stuff. So, you know, really just I want to call out Remo Belli and um, thank him for uh, what a lot of blessing it's for so many people, uh, certainly for myself personally, but I think for the movement as a whole, regardless of whether you're using a Remo instrument or not, that's not consequential. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, that this movement is out there and the tool of rhythm and the tools of percussion are just that much more accessible and uh, in acceptance in the broader culture. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, this this vision, it's amazing. I wish I could have spoken to him and asked him so many questions. Mm, the, yeah. the persons, you know, a person like that who has a vision for this, and then you're here, you're still here, seeing that come to fruition, that has got to feel amazing to you, to like just, whoa, this is actually happening, um, and yeah. being alive to see it. Um, how, yeah. does, how does that feel? Uh, it's, uh, it feels like a blessing. Uh, I just, um, hmm. I just feel a great deal of gratitude, uh, you know, for everybody who's, all of us who are out there, um, with a really this beautiful intention to create community and well-being through this wonderful tool. And for all the people who do this kind of work, regardless of the modality, but the folks we're talking about right now are facilitators of rhythm events and drum circles, mm-hmm. whether they're music therapists that use it or teachers or corporate trainers, it doesn't matter. Um, it just, uh, 
it feels magnificent. There's a word for you. Yeah. It uh, it is a global movement, and I'm I would just guess that uh, with twenty thousand plus trained that I can guess at, plus the you know however many thousands who have come to it on their own or have never heard of or have considered each of these people is facilitating hundreds if not thousands of people a year i would guess that we're talking about millions of people engaging in rhythm activity oh, yeah. for their well-being easily every, every year and uh as we said this has bubbled up through the groundwater and is now visible through uh major media and in major institutions so i'm seeing as that this the feels as if the wave is cresting uh it's always hard to say when a tipping point will come but it's a far piece from where we started that's for damn sure yeah well you know very I mean, exciting. we have so many just in this one city that i live in in louisville kentucky we have several drum circles that happen throughout the city mm. you know different mm-hmm. groups pop up and you know and it's been wonderful you know the past i think what was it four years ago i started a community drum circle and now from that people have you know gotten other groups together and so now there's several of them going mm. which is amazing because it wasn't happening before so nice work that's, with them, sister. that's one city so if you think <laughs> about it if we go to the next city and multiply that and then the next city and multi- it just like it is literally millions and millions of people are are um, being affected by this in positive ways so that's oh it's a beautiful thing and so that I just really want to give thanks to Remo and all the people Remo Belly his vision but all the people that worked with him and that have you know been facilitating because it is it's a it's a team effort and it's a community effort and um, I, I know it's not going to stop anytime soon there's there's a lot of people really passionate about this work and have seen a lot of positive effects from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and all praise to Remo, and I, I, I want to extend that to uh, all, uh, all praise to all those people you just mentioned because it's, it's ultimately not about Remo. He uh, a, has a vision that has helped us all move this forward more quickly and more powerfully. And it were it not for every individual that was out, out there with their passion and, and willingness to share it, uh, it would be meaningless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I do want to ask you about this because I'm going to attend one of these um, this, I think it's in April. Um, there are lots of these around the country and the world, the Remo Health Rhythms. Can you speak to mm-hmm. that? Yeah, uh, you know, the health, health rhythms is based on um, the research that Remo funded, and it was some of the very first research on the effects of group, of, uh, group drumming on human well-being, and it was actually a blood draw. It was uh, in an assess uh, the um, um, rate of change of, of killer T cells, uh, which is a cancer-fighting cell, and there were other measures that it took. And that... Uh, that um, research protocol became the health rhythms protocol and Barry, Dr. Barry Bittman, Christine Stevens and a couple of others uh, developed the protocol and the training. So the health rhythms training is a 10 step protocol uh, that has lots of components, some of which are drumming, some it's visualization, there's icebreakers, uh, there's reflective stuff and ultimately the goal is to get to disclosure or conversation. Uh, and the drum circle is the, the, the group drumming aspect is uh, allows people to bond as we've spoken mm-hmm. and create that safe container. The drum acts as a voice of expression about the state of being of each individual. That's a given and a consciously stated objective and you know, an invitation, I should say. And then the invitation is to actually speak that. That's the disclosure part, the conversation part. Uh, where uh, it can be spoken to the container and heard in a, in a circle of trust. And that is, uh, you know, the context it can be used for, you know, cancer support groups or youth at risk. It's very flexible. It can be themed for just about any purpose. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really, uh, I think it's a very powerful program. And, and I think we've trained about 
9,000 people at this point. Uh, and we have several trainers now, so it's it's much more accessible. I'm really pleased you're going to be able to go. Yeah, That's I'm thrilling. so excited and so, so excited because yeah. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and 2020 is the time to do it. So I've already um, figured out which place I'm going to and when and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited. Great. Where will you go? I think it's the one in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. It's in oh. April. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to do it for a while. So I feel like where I'm going, um, this is the direction that it's going in. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Looking Beautiful. Um, so where can we find you on social media or um, like Facebook, social media of any sort, if anyone mm-hmm. wants to ask you questions about any of these things? Well, you can certainly find me on Facebook, John Fitzgerald. I'm, you'll, uh, I'm the guy with the uh, smile and the ponytail. <laughs> uh, and you'll see lots of stuff about drum circles on my page and other things. Sweet. I also have a, a, a page, a business page, which is John Fitzgerald Coaching Facilitation. You're welcome to look over there. Uh, people are absolutely uh, welcome to email me at my work address, uh, which is John. It's My name is John Fitzgerald, so it's first initial last name at remo.com which would be j f i t z g e r a l d at remo.com uh happy to connect and act as a resource and support in any way i can oh that is awesome thank you so much john you are an angel in this drumming community Mm. and so so happy that you were able to be on the show today um is there Mm. anything else that you would like to share that comes to mind uh, just to, to thank you uh, for your passion and uh, um, how you're showing up in the world and, and creating with such generosity. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Uh, mahalo, my friend. Mahalo. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your love of percussion and the power it possesses in your life but and in the lives of others that you've been hope to see you soon i know we'll see each other at one of these conferences but i so appreciate your time today sharing with us you bet the sooner the better and blessings to you and thank you so much for the opportunity to share